Hey Kapiti Impact Church, it's Mark here. Now, there's a lot of worry at the moment, a lot of worry in the news. People aren't sure what's going to be happening in the next few days, in the next few weeks. And just a little reminder that the gospel is an antidote for worry. And times like these, it's important to remember not just who we are, but whose we are. Now, I'm not saying don't wash your hands. <laughs> wash your hands. James 4 8. Wash your hands. But whose are we? We are his. He takes all our worries and all of our cares. We are his. He's the one who pours his peace that passes all understanding, guarding our hearts and our minds. We're his. We are loved outrageously, outrageously by God. And in that love, it casts out all fear. We're his. There we go. There we go. Remember whose you are. We're his. Remember you're loved. And remember he's the one who supplies all of our needs. We're his. Good morning, Kapiti Impact Church. Fantastic to have you here. Thanks for waking up and turning on your device and coming and joining us for our online gathering this morning. Except now the challenge is you can't just relax. I need you to get engaged. We want you to get uh, involved with what's happening this morning. It's really good to have you here. My name's Lawrence. For those who don't know me, um, I'm the pastor of Kapiti Impact Church along with my wife, Philippa. And it's our pleasure to host you for our online gathering today. We're going to uh, have a great time just of praise and worship and a short message and a time of communion together. So get ready for a great morning. I want you to prepare your hearts now as I pray and then I'll hand it over to Tim and he's going to lead us in a bit of worship. So why don't you join with me in praying. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the awesome morning that it is. Thank you that we get the privilege of living in New Zealand and all of the beauty around us, all of the amazing uh, privileges that we have because we're in this place. And God, I ask as we gather this morning in all our homes and all our locations that your spirit would move amongst us, that we would be stirred with faith, we'd be stirred with the joy inside that we serve a God who's never changing, who's always the same and who's completely and utterly trustworthy. God, we thank you for the privilege of being able to serve you and to worship you this morning. And so we open our hearts, we open our, our, our spirits to you and we ask that as we worship you today, you would be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Fantastic. Great. Well, I'm going to hand it on to Tim. Tim's going to lead us in a couple of songs. He's going to start off with uh, Every Giant Will Fall. Hey, good morning, Kapiti Impact Church. It's really great to be able to worship with you this morning. Hey, just a real quick encouragement that as I sing through these songs, uh, this isn't just about you watching me play. It's not just about you listening to the words, um, but it's about you praising our mighty God who is there in the midst of every chaotic moment. He's there to give us peace, to calm the storm, uh, he's a name that is above every name. And it's just a pleasure to be able to lead you in worship this morning. I'd encourage you, sing along at the top of your lungs. Um, even if you've got headphones on, it could be a laugh. Um, but let's lift up the name of God together. He causes every giant to fall. And uh, this is no greater time uh, than now to praise our God. So let's sing together. <laughs> The man. 
mountains will move every shade of the past broken into only fear over lies we're seeing the truth above every name. Thank you, Jesus. And you are the word in the beginning. And with God the Lord most high. The hidden glory and creation. Now
nothing compares to this What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Could not hold you, built up before you, silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no God, we hand over all of our worries, all of our anxieties, all of the unknowns that this world can bring. God, we hand them over to you because you carry a name with all authority to break every chain, to see every giant fall. And God, when we hand that over to you, you give us a yoke that is easy and a burden that is light. So God, even in this time now, we choose to worship, we choose to praise, we choose to honour you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the name that is above every name, such a beautiful name, such a wonderful name, such a powerful name, and that's the name of Jesus. So Jesus, we honour you this morning, we thank you that you're glorious that you're wonderful to praise and that you're faithful in every circumstance. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, thank you for singing along. We're going to hand back to Lawrence uh, to hear an encouraging message. Thanks, Tim. It was a great time of worship. Really awesome to be able to spend time in the presence of God and, and reflect and honour him for how good he is. This week's obviously been um, a challenging one. Last week we did our first live stream and today we're doing our first pre-recorded uh, service but um, and so that's been challenging for us just being able to work through the difference it's amazing to think that um, 
three weeks ago we were having a normal service uh, in Grace Hall and then now we're completely different. Church looks completely different to what we were. Um, in fact, life looks look completely different. And so um, we're trying to discover and feel our way through this. And I love the fact that um, there are so many possibilities and so many opportunities for us uh, in this new world that we live in for at least the next four weeks um, to explore some different ways of doing church, of different ways of building connection and relationship um, that are quite exciting. And I, th I think um, you being here this morning is a, is a great thing and to be able to uh, engage with you. Um, I loved last week with our online uh, live streaming and just the amount of engagement we got through through Facebook and and just the comments that we had through that as well and and uh, that was just awesome. I said to um, one of the other pastors I was talking to around New Zealand um, and I was just saying it was it, it was way more engagement than I would normally get on a Sunday morning after a message or during a service. We got way more engagement and, and that was really really cool and I liked that I liked that uh, that idea that there was an ability to have um, community and conversations uh, through an online forum that we don't have in a Sunday morning setting so that's quite exciting I love the fact that we can be looking at opportunities and so part of the thing that I want to talk about this morning is as learning um, is is the idea that we can be people that are possibility thinkers, that we can be people who choose to take moments of chaos and change, to not just um, to derail us, but to give us an opportunity to rethink things, to allow the creativity of God to burst forth in those moments where we're disturbed, where we're upset, where we're challenged, where we're um, where we're struggling to find our feet, that we can find opportunity and we can reach out in faith for new opportunities. When we faith up, face opposition, that we can believe that God um, always gives us a way of escape or a, a creative way to get out of where we're at. And so um, I think that's exciting for us. I think um, there are prophetic words around the world of, of this being a seismic shift in, in our communities and particularly in churches. Um, and so that's a really exciting thing. And so I'm, I'm inviting you to be part of the conversation of where this goes. We've got another at least um, four weeks, so another few weeks of this going on. And, and we're trying, we've been trying really hard this week just as um, elders and staff to make sure that we're connecting with everyone associated with uh, the Impact Church community. And um, so you should be seeing emails, um, have received texts from Philippa. You will have received some phone calls as well. And our goal is to be able to, to make contact with you personally through some medium over this next period of time. So um, it's really important if you're not getting emails or you're not getting text messages that you contact with us, uh, be in contact with us, because it could be that we've got wrong details for you. So, um, yeah, that would be really helpful because I'm really excited about what God's doing amongst us. I think it is reorienting um, us a little bit back to the things that are really important. And that is the idea that um, God is active and present wherever we are. We don't have to necessarily go to a... Um, a venue to worship. We can be in our homes to worship like we've done this morning. Um, we're bringing Jesus back into our homes in a, a, a very clear and demonstrable way. And so that's really exciting. If you've got your Bibles, I want to I want to uh, reflect on a story out of um, 1 Samuel 13 and 14. Is this a story about um, Saul and Jonathan? And I wanted to just look at this um, in light of that com that idea that God has called us to be possibility thinkers, to be to be people who are looking for the opportunities, the the possibilities that exist in every situation for God to use us to bring transformation, to bring a shift in what's going on. So, First Samuel chapter thirteen and um and fourteen, and this is a story about uh, if you know anything about the history of Israel. Um, 
Israel and the Philistines were always at war, it seemed like. They were always battling each other. And so this is nothing different in this story. In this situation, excuse me, the background is that um, that the Philistines had taken over Israel. And they'd taken it over in such a way that they had removed all of the blacksmiths out of the land. So the blacksmiths were the people who worked steel. So generally they were the ones who would create all of the weapons of warfare. They would service the, um, the shovels and the forks and the plows and everything um, to make sure that harvest and growing crops and, and chopping trees with axes and all that sort of thing happened well. Except there were none in Israel because the Philistines had wiped them all out. And so you can imagine you've now got an economy that is um, that is struggling because its workforce is unable to work. Does that ring any bells? Um, and there was also a problem for the army. The army had no weapons of warfare. In fact, the scriptures describe the, the, the situation that they were in, that they had two swords for their whole army, and those swords were held by Saul and Jonathan, the king and the prince. And, which is probably logical, but everyone else who was in the army was unarmed, had no sword, no spear. So they were in a pretty dire situation. The Philistines had done a fantastic job of taking over the country, and that was a great strategy of removing the blacksmiths, because they could not fight back. And yet, the Israelites being the Israelites, they were still trying to cause problems and causing issues um, and Jonathan had led a, a battle just previous to this that had, that had irritated the Philistines. And so the Philistines at the beginning of chapter 13 assemble their army to come in and to wipe out Israel. And so the Bible says that they have 3,000 chariots, they have 6,000 charioteers, and they had warriors as numerous as the grains on the sea, of sand on the seashore. So this was a massive army coming in. And you can imagine how that made the people of Israel feel. They've got two swords against a massive army. They're afraid. They're facing opposition. They're facing uh, an enemy that way outnumbers them, that is way bigger than them. And so the story is this, that the army's there and they begin to run away. They become so consumed by what they're facing and the fear that they have that they run away, that they hide in caves, they hide in holes, the scriptures talk about. And they're so consumed by fear that they're no longer an army, they're no longer a warriors, but they're afraid and they're running. So that's the situation that we find ourselves in. In fact, Saul's army had diminished to the number of 600 against this whole thing. And what makes it worse is that the story goes that the Philistines had surrounded them. So they were outnumbered, vastly outnumbered. They were completely surrounded. And then they were stuck waiting for something to happen. And that's where uh, Jonathan comes into the story because the Israelites were stuck waiting for something to happen. And Jonathan in his mind goes, I'm in a no-win situation. We're going to die no matter what, what happens. So I'm not going to sit here and wait for them to come and kill me. I'm going to do something. And so he stood up and he thought of the possibilities of what could happen serving a God who he knew was uh, able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what he could think, ask, or imagine. And so he makes this statement. He says to his armor bearer, he goes, let's go out to the outpost of these pagans let's go and take these philistines on it's either i sit here and wait for them to come to me and kill me or we're just going to take them on and so he took them on and he said to his he said to his armor bearer this is his statement he said perhaps the lord will help us for nothing can hinder the lord he can win a battle whether he has many warriors or only a few do you love that it says perhaps Perhaps the Lord will help me. I'm a possibility thinker. It's possible that God might use me to change something. It's hmm, it's probable that God might use me to say, change something. If he doesn't, at least I've done something. You can just pick up that attitude. And the armor bearer goes to him. His response to, to Jonathan goes is, whatever is in your heart, I'll serve you and do it. 
That is an amazing, amazing comment. But Jonathan was a possibility thinker. He wasn't going to sit around and wait. He's going, what is it? What are the opportunities that this provides? How We're in a no-win situation. What are the opportunities for me to experience the power of God? And maybe, just maybe, he'll act on our behalf and rescue us. And so he goes out and, and he comes up with this fantastic plan. He goes out towards the outpost and his, his fantastic plan is this. He says to his armor bearer, if we go over, when they see us, if they've, they've got two choices. Either they can say, stay you where you are and we'll come and kill you. Or come up to us and we'll kill you. That's really our two options. And if, if they tell us to come up, then we know that that's a sign from God. What? A sign from God? That, oh, that doesn't even make sense. But that's what he says. That's his strategy. And so when they call him to come up, the Bible says that they went up with both hands and both feet. So they're climbing a hill like this, both hands, both feet, to face a, a, a higher opponent. So they've got the advantage, not just of numbers and weapons, but also of height. They have the, the, the psychological advantage. They have the physical advantage of location. And yet Jonathan still goes, there's a possibility for something great to happen. And I, if I don't act, then there's a possibility that possibility goes missing. And I'm going to die anyway. So why not die in the hope that God will come through? And you know, he comes up to the top of the mountain and and um, and it, the Bible goes in and it makes this comment and it says that he, as Jonathan walked, the soldiers fell over and the armor bearer killed the ones coming from behind and they turned the battle that day. Amazing story, amazing story, built on the fact that Jonathan decided that perhaps there was a possibility that God could do something great. So my challenge, I guess my thought for us today, it's not just a challenge, but it's a, a thought for us is, in this situation where we're in a no-win situation, where we're outnumbered, you know, we can't fight a virus, you can't fight a virus. Everything's stacked against us, and yet we know God is for us. And so in this situation, what possibilities are you looking for? What possibilities are you open to of how God might be able to change your perspective, change your thinking a little bit to be able to go, you know, there's a possibility for something new to happen here, for something great to happen in my life, for something incredible to take place. And I just need to shift my thinking to go, perhaps God, perhaps God can act on my behalf. Perhaps God and give it a go because you never know what might happen. You know, I've even experienced this um, this last period of time, my ability to invite people to our gatherings. You know, my confidence to do that has gone up because it's online. There's no, they're not threatened by that. You can invite people and they can choose to come in and they can do it anonymously. You know, things like that. The possibilities are endless in this situation. How might this situation where we've been forced into something that we didn't choose, that's a no-win for a lot of us, how might our thinking need to change to see the possibilities that God has for us? You know, Israel was vastly outnumbered. And yet, Jonathan, by seeing a possibility, won a mighty victory. What might God be wanting to do through you during this period of lockdown? What might he want to do? Let's move our thinking to allow the impossible to become possible. To see situations that we would consider no wins situations. For God miraculously to turn them around and, and win an, an amazing victory. Because that's what he wants for us. He wants us to be people who live um, as more than conquerors in every situation we face. But it does require us to change our thinking. It does require us to allow God to shift our perspective so we see possibilities instead of problems. So we see the victory instead of the opposition. So we see how mighty our God is and how much he has done for us and how much he wants to do for us if we'll just give him the opportunity to do that. 
So I bless you today to know that you serve a God who, to whom the impossible is possible. Where he wants to act on your behalf, where he wants to do something amazing in your life, if you'll just give him the opportunity to do it. I bless you today to know that there are many possibilities to get out of the situation that you're in. And God is with you and his Holy Spirit is in you to give you the creativity to look at all the possibilities. Let your thinking change. Let God change your thinking. Because he's, he wants to do that. So I bless you to know that you're loved by a God who has great possibilities for your world and my world at this time. Grace and peace, everyone. I'm going to hand it over to Philippa. She's going to lead us um, in a time of communion as we reflect on Jesus' death and resurrection. Easter is a couple of weeks away, so it's a really important time for us uh, to remember this. Um, so over to you, Philippa. Morena family, it's wonderful to be able to gather and celebrate communion together today. Um, as you eat and drink, don't worry about what you're eating and drinking, what supplies you do or don't have. Um, it's not about what you're eating and drinking. It's about remembering Jesus and what he's done for us. I've been celebrating and remembering personally about Passover lately. I've been thinking about the way that God caused his covering to be over the Israelites. And every time they celebrated Passover after that, he, they were celebrating what he'd done. They were celebrating his covering. And at the Last Supper, they were busy celebrating his covering. And at the same time, Jesus just blew their minds and opened their eyes to a new thing that they could celebrate. He said, hey, soon you're going to be able to celebrate and remember me. And so this morning, we're remembering Jesus. We're remembering the fact that he is our covering. We're remembering that he is our hope and those are things that we can daily hold on to and that doesn't mean everything will always be beautiful it doesn't mean everything will always be perfect but it does mean that he is always with us it does mean that we always have his hope and his covering I don't know if you can read the beautiful Emily Dickinson quote behind me but it says hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words And never stops at all. <laughs> Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And we can also celebrate his incredible covering. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Maybe you could say those who live in the covering of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We can rest in his shadow. We can find shelter in him. We can find covering in him. And at the moment, everything seems to be a little bit chaotic, but we still have his hope and his covering over us. So Father, as we remember today the incredible gift that you have given us of giving us Jesus, May we, Father, remember your incredible covering. Jesus, may we remember the incredible gift you gave and the hope that you gave and continue to give. And Holy Spirit, may we all be aware of your incredible enveloping presence that helps us to find true rest. It's wonderful to be able to connect with you guys. I pray peace and joy and health and amazing things for each of you and your family.